Hey guys, I'm Heidi with AMP Home Church, and welcome back to our Seeing the Unseen study by Randy Alcorn. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap that little bell icon. That will give you a notification when these videos come out each and every day, Monday through Friday. That way you guys have the weekend to catch up and join us for service. Um, remember today at 3 p.m. Eastern time over in the Facebook group where we do all of the things, which are linked down here below, um, we've got another meet and greet with one of our church members. We really want to keep in encouraging you guys to come on, do a little live, introduce yourself and your family. Let us get to know more about you. And then we also have Testimony Tuesday tonight. So these are so special, so amazing. We have different church members coming on and sharing their testimony. So 7 p.m. Eastern time, those will be going on in the group. So come and join us. You can set a reminder on your phone or come over and click on the events tab. That will show you everything. And if you click that you are going, Facebook will give you a heads up. I have a hair on my face somewhere. Facebook will give you a heads up one hour before the event so that way that way you can come and join us. That was ridiculous, but it's real life. That's what's happening. Um, so yeah, over on the Facebook group, check out the events tab. That'll tell you everything going on. And also check out the announcements tab so that you're not missing anything. Can you guys believe it's almost time for a new month? I cannot. I can't believe it's June, but we're almost there. So day 62, diving here back into our study, is present suffering with future perspective. We are to rejoice in our inheritance in heaven, even as God sovereignly uses difficulties in our lives as a fire to refine, purify, and strengthen our faith. He says, I'll never forget my first 30 seconds of high school. I walked in the front door, tripped, and fell on my face. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right in front of three cheerleaders, which I'm sure every high school boy just would be mortified. They laughed hysterically. Not a good start for a freshman desperately wanting to be cool. At the time, that incident hurt worse than a serious ankle injury I suffered while playing football. Fast forward 40 years, and though I still remember it vividly, my past embarrassment doesn't hurt a bit. Now I laugh. Of course, my teenage troubles do not compare to having cancer, being tortured, or seeing a child die. I only mean that certain experiences that bring us genuine pain no longer do so as time passes and we gain perspective. And that counts even for the very, very heavy, serious stuff. God promises that our future with him will break forth in such glorious happiness that all present suffering will pale in comparison. All. Oh. Right, And we see that in Romans 8.18 and 2 Corinthians 4.17. All who know Jesus will have a happy ending. We just haven't seen it yet. So your present sufferings, regardless of how serious and deep they are, because there's real suffering, absolutely. They, You guys, it will be nothing. And that's why we give that example all the time where I say, hey, remember when you fell when you were two and you scraped up your knee real bad? No, right? Like, does that affect you in your day-to-day -day life? Are you still walking around with with huge, you know, emotional turbulence because of falling and scraping your knee? No, but when you were two, it was a huge ordeal, right? It was very, very big. Nothing so bad had ever happened to you in your whole life. Because time, as it goes on, these things, they become less and less. Time heals all wounds, right? I mean, it's just kind of how it goes. As time goes on, those things, they gain perspective and they realize, oh, well, it was a big deal then. It's really not a big deal anymore. But that is a really big thing to understand that, that regardless, God says all of our present sufferings will, will fade. All of these, they will pale in comparison to what we have, what we have coming. And so he knew when he said that, that that meant death, disease, heartbreak, uh, you know, loss, all of these things. God knew that when he said that he's not like, oh no, but except for you, you, you're dealing with something that, oh my gosh, yeah, no, never. No, it's not what it says. Some perspectives from God's word. These trials have come so that your faith or of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. We see that in 1 Peter 1, verses 6 through 7. James 1, verses 2 and 3 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Count it all as joy. Are we counting our current hardships and troubles as joy? John Newton was quoted saying, Everything is necessary that God sends our way. Nothing can be necessary that he withholds. Whatever you're going through right now, it is necessary that the Lord 
is sending you whatever it may be. That could be sickness. That could be disease and death. That could be hurt and hardship, homelessness, financial troubles, but you know, whatever, whatever it may be, God knows. And he sent it to you for a reason, right? Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth said, how often do we resist the circumstance that God's using to teach us dependence on him? There is a purpose and a reason for everything. And we're going to read more about that over on the blog, epm.org forward slash bad best. And it's titled turning bad into best. He starts off by saying in Romans eight twenty eight, Paul wrote, we know that God works all things together for good to those who love him. This verse tells us what we will one day see and retrospect. C.S. Lewis in The Great Divorce wrote that both good and evil, when they are full grown, become retrospective. Heaven, once attained, will work backwards and turn even the agony into a glory. The curse will be reversed. Lewis has Aslan explained the deeper magic the witch didn't know about when he died for a sinner. The table would crack and death itself would start working backward. Retrospect enables us to see everything differently. It's why we can call the worst day in all history Good Friday. Faith is like a forward memory, allowing us to believe as if what is promised has already happened. I love that. One day we will see how Romans 8.28 was true all along, even in those moments we most doubted it. Joseph saw this in Genesis 50.20, the Romans 8.28 of the Old Testament, where he said you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good right? Let's notice Joseph didn't merely say God made the best out of a bad circumstance. No, he intended it for good. Here's a question. I want all of us to truly look at ourselves and answer this. How long will it take living with God on the new earth before you say, at last, all that suffering has been worth it? Five seconds, five minutes, five years? Maybe you're a pessimist and you think it would take 500 years before it would be worth it. Well, fine, Eeyore, or perhaps I should say puddle gum. I don't, puddle glum? I don't know what that's from. After 500 years, you'll have an eternity of unending God-centered happiness in front of you, paid for by the shed blood of God. Can you think of anything better? Name one. We'll wait. Didn't think so. There's only one answer bigger than the question of evil and suffering. Jesus did you ever think I would never do to my child what God has done to me? He must not care. Picture Jesus stretching his nail-scarred hands toward you and asking, do these look like the hands of a God who does not care? God's son, by taking upon himself our sins, suffered far more than any person in history. If God decided all the suffering of history is worth the price paid, who are we to say otherwise? Remember we talked about yesterday with that perfect author? He knows everything and took upon himself the lion's share of human suffering. Hasn't he earned the right to be trusted? Take some time to list the worst things that have ever happened to you. Then list the best things. You'll be astonished by how many of those best things came out of the worst things. Trust God to do the same things with th same things that don't yet make sense. In the hands of a God of sovereign grace, our sufferings will give birth to future happiness beyond our wildest dreams. Jesus said our sorrows will, will turn into joy, not just to be, no, sorry, not just be followed by joy, but transformed into joy, right? In John 16, 20, we see that. Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. So think of it. For God's children, what is now pain will ultimately be transfigured into both glory and joy. And again, doesn't that beg to reason that the greater the pain and trial and hardship now, the greater the glory and joy and reaping of all of that will be? It will. Um, this was a blog. It was a, the excerpt from Randy's um, contribution to the romantic rationalist, God, Life, and Imagination in the Work of C.S. Lewis, um, a book that was done. So if you are a big C.S. Lewis fan or any of that stuff there, 
you might um, you might find some joy in looking that up. So let's stop. Let's look at ourselves today. Where do we fall in the spectrum? Where are we struggling? Where are we looking at these sufferings and these hardships and going, oh, there's no way I can get through them. Guys, I know it was a, a process for me. And, and now I feel like kind of working, not that I think you, you ever get it completely put together, but being more so on the other side of the spectrum where our family is living by faith. We've totally gone all in. We've done these things and living any other way, like the thought of even trying to hold on and not just walk boldly into the blazing inferno going, okay, God, whatever you want. Like it, it almost seems like a foreign idea now. Um, I kind of think like, honey, how did we ever live that way? Not just waking up every day going, God, what do you have for me? It is a process and it is something that we have to go through and work through. But I think it's important and I think it's one definitely worth stopping and saying, hey, where am I at? What am I doing? How do we do this? God, I'm stepping out in faith. I'm giving you all my suffering, all the hardship, because I know that you have promised to turn it into joy and glory to your name. So, all right, let's do it. But again, all of these go back to we have to stop and we have to look at our heart before we can move on to any of these other things. It all starts with us and where we're at. It's not who's causing the suffering and who's the problem of the story and whatever it is. Where are we? Where is our heart? Praying this blesses you guys today. I will post the study questions over on the Facebook group. Hope to see you tonight for Testimony Tuesday and the meet and greets. If you have not done yours already, come sign up because we want to see, we want to know more about you. Praying you guys are all doing well and we will see you all then. Bye guys.